Okay, this is the lecture for the uncapacitated facility location problem. So let's click on that, uncap. Okay, so this is similar to before, um, similar to the K-median problem, except um, we now have a cost to um, locate a facility at different places. So maybe locating a facility in LA is going to be more expensive than locating a facility in, let's say, Wichita. So I think otherwise the setup is very similar. So I I left a lot of this um, like in the previous code. So we have our hundred random uh, factory locations and our one thousand random demand points. And we also needed another information, uh, another bit of information to make this work. And that's the, the factory costs. Which again, I'm going to choose at random. So I need to use this random package. So the. Factory cost. So let's say this is the annual cost to. Uh, say build or operate this factory. Um, I'm going to use random.random .random. for all factory locations. But you know this this cost should be bigger than one. I mean this is random.random .random is always going to return something between zero and one. And these factory costs should be should be bigger than that. Um, you know, I don't know what the right number is, but at least in some experiments that I ran earlier to, to kind of give us approximately five factories. This should be somewhere around here. So I'm going to multiply 300 times random dot random. OK. So again, this is purely just for demonstration purposes. This is not a, a realistic factory cost, but. OK, so I'll run these same cells. We'll get our factory locations. I'll plot them. So here are candidate sites. I'll do the same thing for the demand points. I again have the rectilinear distance. I think we won't bother with the Chebyshev or Euclidean distance anymore. And then now we're ready to start building the model. So maybe I'll go ahead and run them anyway. Okay. So we create our model, so we do that dot model. Uh, we'll create our X variables. So these are really the same as before. We have one of these variables for every facility or factory and for every demand point. And these could be binary or we can define them as continuous. It doesn't matter for this particular model. But the Y variables, which are the opening, the factory opening variables, these really do need to be binary. Okay. Um, and then we should set our objective. So this will be very similar to before. Um, but again, it's the cost that we're trying to optimize. And that cost has two parts. So the first part will be transportation cost, and the second part will be that factory cost. So that transportation cost is going to be same as in the K median problems. Is this A times Xij? And we'll add this over all factories I and all demand points J. And then our factory cost is going to be the factory cost for I times the decision of whether to use that factory at I. And we'll add this up over all choices of I. So if you wanted to, you could add a a line break there just to make this a little prettier. Okay, I think that looks good. 
I'll run that. Okay. So for our constraints, I think these are very similar to before. So I'll have a constraint for each demand point. So for J in demand points, we'll say that you should be covered once or essentially 100% of your demand should be fulfilled by one of these factories. So on the left side, we'll sum the X variables over all factories that could be supplying it. And then we also have those kind of coupling constraints. Being that it's, you don't build a factory at I, if this Y is zero, then those assignments X should also be zero. So you, you, can't, you can't use a factory that doesn't exist to serve demand. This should be for all I and factories and for all J and demand points. And again, uh, we have you know a hundred thousand of these constraints, so I don't want to run the cell quite like this. I need to first do in that update so it doesn't print everything. And that takes a second or so to add all of those hundred thousand constraints. Um, and like before, I will force Ruby to use the concurrent method, which is three. And then I'll solve. Okay, so even though I have a model with a hundred thousand plus variables, hundred which are binary, it still solves in a few seconds, two seconds actually. Okay, so I can go ahead and visualize our solutions again, I think, to make this match what I had in the previous code. Let me do this. OK. So I'll get the set of selected factory sites, which this code is calling them medians, but they're not medians technically because we're not solving the K median problem anymore, but this is just convenient. Um, so I think all of this code is exactly the same. Okay, so you'll see that I actually have six factories that have been selected. Okay, so when I go to draw things here, I will need to iterate over all of these K factories where I'm choosing K just to be the number of these factories that we've located. And I had to make a slight change to the code here. Let's see if this will work. Okay. So those are my six locations that are servicing those six regions. I think the, the picture here is not super pretty. Maybe if I reran the model, I'd get something prettier. So I think one thing at play here is that these factory costs are kind of uniformly at random between zero and 300. So some of these factory costs could be quite small and unrealistic. So that may be adding to the, the strange pictures we're getting here. There could be. Um, some factories, I don't know, maybe there's a factory here in the green segment that only cost a dollar or something like that. Maybe that's why it's building this. Yeah, still not super pretty. One thing I could do is I could say these costs could be 100 plus and then some random number. And that way I don't have any super tiny factory costs. Let's see if that makes a difference. <laughs> it was too high.
Okay, it's getting a little, a little more believable. Okay, this will be the last time. <laughs> okay, that looks plausible. Okay, so that does it for this uncapacitated facility location model. Um, maybe what I should also do is to say print the number that are assigned. Okay, so we have 325 demand points assigned to factory 33, 379 to factory 68. And so since we're doing uncapacitated facility location, um, we don't have any limits on how many points or what the total demand that can be satisfied is. So in the, the next video, we'll we'll try to restrict this or maybe more specifically not restrict the number of demand points, but the, the amount of demand that's uh, permitted.